Welcome to the series, When is a model steam engine not worth rebuilding? This is part 7. It has taken a considerable time to arrive at this stage of the rebuild, and there are still a few jobs left to do. This episode shows assembly of the valve gear on both sides, and a compressed air test to see how well it runs. By now, I can fully justify the title of this series. Many hours have gone into this job so far, and more hours of work are still needed to complete it. I'm just checking that everything's rotating as it should be, and of course it is. Before I make the fittings that hold the eccentric rod onto the expansion link, I need to make sure that the valve's travel is correct. The valve needs to uncover the ports an equal amount at either end as the engine is rotated. Previously I was unable to get this setting because the expansion link was just swinging about in free air. But now the eccentric rods are coupled to the expansion link and the expansion link is in the right place, I can see where the valve is. Now that the valve is in the right place, I can go ahead and make the fittings to permanently bolt the eccentric rods to the expansion link. Before making the fittings though, I am going to have one more look at this to make sure the valve is in precisely the right place, because once it's all bolted together, it will be a pain having to unbolt it. The valve would appear to be in the right place as it's moving the same amount at each end of the stroke. So it's time to make the pins that fasten it all together. These pins are one eighth of an inch in diameter, with a 4BA thread at each end. A tight 4BA thread as well, because I don't want them to be a rattle fit. Although one of the nuts is actually going to be fastened on with some Loctite 603. The other thing I'm also going to have to do is machine the nuts to be a smaller thickness. There isn't much room at all between the two bars that pull the expansion link back and forth. Leaving the nuts standard size will just make it so that they foul the bars. The lathe is currently running too slowly really, so I'm just taking gentle cuts. A while back, from eBay, I bought quite a few 4BA brass half nuts. These are used as lock nuts normally, but they're ideal for the other end of the pins. And as you've just seen, I'm using a pair of surgical forceps to position the brass nut, and now I'm using a spanner and a socket to just nip it up tightly, but not too tightly. Here I'm temporarily bolting up the two bars that pull the expansion link back and forth. I'm having to use a washer at each side to space it out a little bit, because even with the half nuts it's still far too tight. But with the washers fitted it's all going to clear quite nicely. I've also made a stud that secures the expansion link to the two bars. Any nuts that are on these studs that I've made will be secured with thread lock, not with Loctite 603. That's okay for one end, but it would not be a good idea to use Loctite 603 on both ends in case you ever needed to take it apart. So now I can actually fit the steam chest cover. There really is not a lot I can do here about the stud that's in the wrong place, but when the steam chest covers are fully painted, that should hopefully merge into the background somewhat. I intend to paint both the steam chests and the steam chest covers black. The black that you can see on the steam chest cover is just an undercoat. It's the assembly of the other side and the first test run on air. The first thing I've got to do is to get some air into the engine. So I've chopped up the original inlet pipe. And here we go, it runs. This is running on one side only. And the expansion link, as you can clearly see, is free to roam wherever it needs to go. And the good news is, of course, it's not roaming very far at all. I'll give it a little bit more pressure because there's hardly any going in at the moment. It's running quite well for the moment on one side, and it's even starting to bed in. It's running better now than it was doing five minutes ago. I've turned the engine round and I'm working on the other side. First of all I'm setting the valve in the same way as I did on the other side of the engine. Then I will fit the steam chest cover and completely assemble all the valve gear parts, including the operating lever. I'm going to apply some of this stuff. This is Loctite 242 thread locker. Never use the high power retainer like 603 on parts like this because if ever you need to take them apart you'll find it very difficult without heating everything up. 
Ordinary thread lock, which is the one I'm using, is fine. It will stop the nuts working loose. And it's important not to over tighten nuts on parts like these. The valve gear needs to move very freely with minimal resistance. The lay shaft that connects the actuating arms to both ends of the valve gear is a bit of a rattle fit where it goes through the brackets that are part of the valve chest. And whilst I'm assembling the valve gear, it looks worse than it actually is because the steam chest cover is not tightened in place with the nuts yet. Just a quick test here to make sure that everything's running freely and it is doing. So it's on now to the air test on both sides. Compressed air is fed to both cylinders and the engine appears to run OK. The reversing lever is locked in place with a bolt because I need to make a releasable clamp because the one that was with the engine originally was not very good. I'm going to turn up the air pressure now to 45 psi. Well I would say that the first air test is a success, nothing's dropped off the engine and nothing's broken. I'll be running the engine just about every day over the next week or so and things should free off a little bit because it does have a couple of tight spots. In the next video I'll be showing how I make the inlet and exhaust piping and in the final video I'll be showing the engine running in its finished form on its new base. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.